Coming up on American Medicine Today, flu season is a worry for many people, but this season could be much different. Returning guest Dr. Salvatore Giorgiani Jr. joins us to explain why some are calling this winter a triple-demic threat. Then Michael suffered from chronic back pain that made it difficult to stand. After undergoing a failed fusion surgery, he contacted the Bonatti Spine Institute and is now able to get back to his active life. Finally, Dr. Bonatti discusses the differences between biological and intellectual heredity. Mankind traditionally evolved through nature, but have we reached a point where we can alter our own biological future? Find out coming up on American Medicine Today. Featuring cutting-edge science and medical innovation, touching personal stories of recovery from pain, along with political, social, and healthcare issues plaguing our nation. This is American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute and Alfred Bonatti, MD. Welcome to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside Ethan Euchre and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. So as we head into flu season, some experts are already warning about the possible triple-demic of influenza, COVID-19, and a respiratory illness called RSV. So here to discuss what we need to know is our friend, Dr. Salvatore Giorgiani Jr., co-founder of the new nonprofit, Healthy Men Inc. Welcome to the show, Dr. Giorgiani. Thanks again for having me back on, I appreciate it. Can you explain the warnings about this potential triple-demic and, you know, should we really be concerned or is it just more sensationalism by the media? Well, it, it is a possibility, but it's also possible I'll win the trifecta at Aqueduct. Uh, so I think, you know, we always have to be aware of these things. Mm -hmm. We always have to know that they're out there. But I don't think it's something that we should really be focusing on getting a tridemic. There are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, lots of folks have already been well vaccinated from COVID. Uh, if you haven't gotten your up-to-date booster, the newer bivalent COVID vaccine, get that. That'll protect you from severe infections. Uh, flu season is certainly upon us. Getting vaccinated for flu is very, very, very important. Fortunately, a lot of guys don't think it's important. So never had one. Yeah. Never no, had one. Either. Either. <laughs> no, never had one. Yeah. Doc's never had I, one either. But, you know, uh, I've never been in a terrible car accident, but I still wear my seatbelt mm. because you just don't know. Right. Yeah. So I think, uh, and there are a couple of reasons we, I think it's a little bit more prudent to be, uh, get the vaccination this year than other years. And the RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, that's also floating around, but that's been floating around for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. It's not a new virus. It's just not something that's uh, been on the radar screen for most folks. It generally uh, is presents, it looks like a cold, uh, some respiratory problems, uh, wheezing, uh, fever. Most usually it's seen in children under two mm -hmm. or in elderly individuals the same category of populations that are at risk for COVID right. uh, and seasonal flu at higher risk. Uh, but it's not the kind, there is no vaccine for it. So mm -hmm. the most important thing you can do is during flu season, be careful. You know, I, I think in the old days, people would sneak into work and cough and sneeze on phone or the microphone or, mm -hmm. you know, pencil or whatever that would be there, uh, computers. Uh, and people would just say, oh, that's so terrible. I don't think that people are still going to try and do that, but I don't think folks in the workplace are going to be as happy about you sneaking in to get, you know, with, with a cold or a flu, because there are so many respiratory illnesses mm -hmm. that can attack you this year. You just have to be careful. Right. Get your shot and be careful. Here's what I'm curious about, Dr. Sell, is that the uh, all three of these for this sort of triple-demic or tridemic, mm -hmm. as you called it, they all basically have the same symptoms from COVID to flu to this RSV. So how are you supposed to know what you have? And then what the heck happened to the common cold? That doesn't exist anymore? Nope, so you, the minute you get a tickle in your nose, it's like, oh my God, I might have COVID. Oh, I might have RSV. Oh, I might have... Uh, the flu, who knows? So, so how are what? Just, just use the name and put it in the garbage can because the <laughs> truth is you're going to catch that one any any winter. And that's all. But they also show, I mean, let's be real, Dr. Sally, you had to have seen the headlines where they're talking about some that are fully vaccinated and boosted get the worst symptoms of COVID-19. 
Well, sure. And uh, my general advice is uh, talk to your doctor. We have to get back to the way mm -hmm. medicine was practiced in the old days sure. about three years ago, where you had a, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, a PA, pharmacist, someone with a white coat that you trusted, who knows you, who knows your medical conditions, who knows your community, and can have a discussion with you mm -hmm. and a dialogue with you and advise you. Because yes, you're right. The symptoms here are all the same. Uh, I think it's very reasonable to say, well, at some point uh, in the year, you're going to come down with a, a, a tickle in your throat or a mm -hmm. clogged nose, and you might even be allergies living in Florida. You just don't know. So I think when you have some symptoms, when you're not feeling comfortable, pick up the phone, do a telehealth visit, uh, talk with your provider. A lot of guys don't have doctors that they can call, no primary care right. providers. You should find one. Uh, get one from you know that you're comfortable with or your your friends are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Sure, you don't have to run out and get a COVID test every time you have a sore throat <laughs> or or a fever, but you do need to be prudent and have it checked out. And I think everyone needs to be their own best advocate. If they feel it's for them, they should do it. And if they feel it's not, they should you know kind of heed that and don't do it. But um, let's talk about your new nonprofit, Healthy Men, Inc. Well, we, uh, some friends of mine who I've worked with uh, on many health advocacy projects, mm -hmm. Dr. Sean Bonhomme, who's a physician, who's also the co-founder of National Black Men's Health Network, Armin Brat, who writes under Mr. Dad. We decided that one of the root causes guys continue to die early is because they don't like going to healthcare. They feel uncomfortable. They feel unwelcome. They're so one of the things we want to do is help reimagine the healthcare system mm -hmm. and our group, Healthy Men uh, Inc., is to help reimagine the healthcare system to be more guy friendly. So they feel comfortable, they don't feel disempowered, mm -hmm. they feel that they have a say in what's going on. And that's our work. And how do we do that though? Because I mean, we all know you gotta love men, but usually no. if they're feeling a little off, it's normally the wife's nudging that gets them to go to the doctor and they usually fight it tooth and nail. Yes, Ethan. Yes, we do. But <laughs> some of us do go, this guy right here. There are some things that are done. For example, uh, there's a technique that's used that's a shared decision-making. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a little time to do it, but guys feel very disempowered when they go into a physician's office or in a medical encounter and they said, you're going to do this, we're going to do that test, or okay, it's time for your your uh, prostate exam. Mm. But there's no discussion, no dialogue. So guys feel put off uh, and guys do like to be, and I think rightfully so, have a say in how their health care goes. So one of the things we are going to start talking a little bit about as we grow a little long uh, in our work is how physicians nurse practitioners, PAs can incorporate shared decision-making with their patients more in into their daily practice. Guys are not used to advocating for themselves about health like women do. Mm -hmm. We just, we go in, we either like the encounter and we'd rather be cleaning the toilet, you know, or cleaning closet out. Watching the game. <laughs> Watching the game, right. Mm -hmm. So how to be your own best advocate. I think those are two of the most important things we're focusing on at Healthy Men Inc. That, Dr. Sal, let me tell you something. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're not going to like this. Uh, uh -oh. But, you know, I really think the virus situation needs to be fought without really treating the people with the vaccinations and just use just your own the old remedies, put the people to work and that get better. And what about the immune system? I mean, we have one. Yeah, but the <laughs> immune, immune system is going to help you. That's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing Because you're going to fight for you. Right. But if you start to take vaccines and things like that, the next thing that happens is you are eliminating your immune system to fight. Mm -hmm. Well, agree to, to disagree, I suppose. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Anyway. Uh, yeah, I would agree to disagree, but I, I will agree very strongly with the point that overall health is terribly important in your ability to to withstand the onslaughts. We live in a sea of bacteria, viruses, fungus, mm -hmm. protozoa, you, you name helmets. And maybe I, I go about as far as the flu, maybe, mm -hmm. but we'll talk again, I'm sure, very soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Salvatore Giorgiani Jr. Pleasure. for being on the program. Thanks, Thank Dr. you very Sal. much. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming up after the break, a story of recovery. 
Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti spine procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented the precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect 98.75% patient satisfaction. 70,000 procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients have suffered from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Michael Cesaro from Lando Lakes, Florida, worked in the medical industry for decades, sacrificing his own physical health in service of others. Uh, I've been a uh, first responder for the first 10 years of my career, firefighter paramedic, which entailed a lot of lifting and twisting. But then they didn't have dry hydraulics like they have today, so you had to actually manually lift stretchers with people on them and turn into a truck. And this is difficult enough, but then you add to that the frequency and then sometimes doing two or three jobs with the same kind of movement is um, detrimental to your health. In 2011, after many years in acute pain, he sought help in the form of fusion surgery. I had been an RN for about 26 years and doing 12-hour shifts on my feet in emergency room. And it was just grueling work, constant movement, and just the weight of my own body was deteriorating my discs as I have the disease to start with. So it got to be to the point where I couldn't walk anymore. I had open surgery done. Doctor um, did a great job. Even the doctors today that have worked on me since said your initial surgeon did everything he could for you. That's not always good enough because there's only a certain amount you can do through open surgery to reduce recovery time and to uh, increase the efficacy of the procedure. So you aren't limited by what it is. From day one, I had these low-grade temperatures. It turned out that I did have a little bit of an infection in the bottom part of the bone of the, of the spine. It's called um, osteomyelitis. So I had to be on an antibiotic, exorbitant amounts of antibiotics, through a pick line in my arm, and I had to give them to me myself at home. My wife's a nurse, so that was helpful. So nobody had to come out, but still, it's two grams and two grams twice a day, and you get thrush, the whole mess. Though he eventually recovered from his fusion surgery, Michael knew it would not be the final answer to his lumbar problems. And after remaining in pain for a few years, he decided to reach out to the Bonatti Spine Institute for help. I used to work at Springfield Fire Department and drive from Dunedin. So on the drive back and forth, I would always see this Bonatti Institute and I never knew what it was. And then years went by, taking patients to Bayonet Point as a firefighter. Then years go by and my wife is working across the street. In, in, in the trauma center. So finally, I said, you know what? It's time to get somebody that I can trust that's not gonna run a mill and just try and crank people out of there and put Band-Aids on the problem instead of fixing it. So I'm gonna go with the guy that's always been there. He seems to have pioneered most of the tools and the way to use them. But I'll tell you what, I walked in the door, and Dr. Badani met me the first day. This is a place to get personal care, you feel as if you're the only patient in the entire institute. Once Michael met with the surgeons and staff reviewing his case in detail by discussing his symptoms and thoroughly examining diagnostic imagery, he began his surgical summary. Bonatti's surgical guests actively participate in their surgeries through the use of conscious IV sedation. But you're totally cognizant of things they want you to feel. Like, where does this hurt? Mm -hmm. The lower leg outside. And they then can pinpoint the exact nerve that you were having pain from. I've had more painful teeth cleaning, truthfully. The recovery time is minimum. And like I said, the whole experience is almost, it's, it's almost surreal. You go in, these same people I've seen before, it's maybe the third time I've been there. First time was to remove hardware. Second time was to remove the rest of the hardware. The third time was to do some work on the bones. You take it in stages and if something stop, it helps, you stop and just wait, see how you recover instead of going in there and trying to fix everything at once. Once the procedure is completed, after a short time spent in the recovery area, guests leave the institute to relax and recuperate in the comfort of their hotel room or their homes. With a patient-reported satisfaction rating of 98.75%, Bonatti guests can feel results immediately. Now, the, the great thing for me, um, as far as immediate gratification, well, the very next day, I can put weight on my foot, and not have that pain shooting down my leg. And uh, that's what it's all about. Because you are 
only as good as that weakest link. First thing to put you off your feet, it's a, it's a game changer. And it's a game changer from an emotional standpoint because of the chronic pain, what it does to you psychiatrically, what it does to your self-esteem. You have to pull yourself up and Bonatti gives you a chance to do that now with instant results. Automatically you're thinking, I'm getting better. And that gives you that lift. But each step is, is a, a stepping stone toward less morbidity and more joy. So each step is another, oh, there's something else that I can do now. Having a career as a healthcare professional, experiencing both an invasive open back fusion surgery and the targeted Bonatti spine procedures, Michael knows the best outcomes happen when you take part in your own care. If I had run into somebody in the street, for instance, and they were telling me about their back pain, and being that I have a relatively decent understanding of how the back works, having been through it myself, I would try to, I think my best advice to this person would be, number one, get one more than one opinion and let one of them be, and with Dr. Bonatti, that you're gonna get upfront what, what your expectations are. This is good, this is to the point, it's succinct, and it's accurate. And they've got it down to literally science. And they're, they're willing to show you exactly what's wrong and what your expectations can be, you can derive from that. So you're never making a non-informed decision. Dr. Bonatti uh, has a unique way of approaching things when it comes to spinal surgery. There's a lot of spinal surgery places out there, but mo I've worked at them before. So I'm telling you from experience, this is the real deal. This isn't the Band-Aid, this is the fix. I think everybody was shocked, like, really, you had surgery today? I had a drain tube. I was at my desk doing payroll for 200 employees, worked till night, got up, went to bed. This type of surgery is so much more advanced, and the recovery time is so much less that it's just a no-brainer. If you've got pain, go to Bonatti. This is the honest to God truth, and was recovering, I didn't feel anything. The pain that I was suffering is gone. I can go back to work in like three days. The surgeries that I had, actually, I recovered very easily from, I would say. Um, I actually went to work the following afternoon. That afternoon, when it was done, I actually felt so much better already. Six days after surgery, I was back in the gym, slowly but surely working my way back to, back to fighting, back, back to basically 100% of fighting, you know? So six days, and everybody was in awe, like, didn't you just get out of surgery? I'm like, yeah, I feel great. And like, Okay, let's see how you do. And I was rolling with everybody, and I'm in the advanced class. So that sounds a lot right there. First time I came in here was Monday, and today is Thursday. I've had two surgeries and am doing fantastic. I'm still in shock that I can walk. That's all within four days. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Welcome back to American Medicine Today. I'm here with Dr. Benatti, and we're talking about the evolution of mankind, specifically hereditary traits as they're formed both biologically and culturally. Doc, what's the difference between the two and why should we really focus on those? And when we talk about evolution, there are two different types of evolution. Mm -hmm. One is the biological evolution. Correct. Or heredity. Mm -hmm. And the other one, is a cultural heredity or evolution. The biological heredity mm -hmm. allowed, allows you to see the progress of the human race from the time that an ape was start to increase knowledge mm -hmm. and start to become a humanoid. An ape was then suddenly had certain type of a difference and start to walk into feet. Really, that transmission takes thousands of years yes. and is only based on environmental changes. Mm -hmm. So a climate change and then suddenly certain species cannot adapt. Right. And uh, when we look today, 
99% of the species mm -hmm. that they existed in nature disappear. They couldn't adapt, adapt essentially, yeah. <laughs> they, exactly. they, can, they, they cannot support the, the, the change. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay? right. Mm -hmm. Now, the Homo erectus then appear around 7,000, 78,000 years ago. And from the Homo sapiens to the modern man really happens a change very, very recent. It's 100,000 years ago mm -hmm. the Homo sapiens exist. Okay. When the modern man start, he developed the, the heredity that we call the culture heredity. Mm -hmm. And the culture heredity is enormously fast because doesn't need the chromosome to change for centuries mm -hmm. before or millenniums mm -hmm. before really adapt. Right. For example, the individual is in an area that the environment is bad and is cold. Mm -hmm. Normally, they will develop through the genes mm -hmm. for many, many years, right. will develop fur. Well, the man mm -hmm. in few hours <laughs> kill an animal and put the fur on top of him right. mm -hmm. and develop the claws. Right. So immediately, the cultural heredity progress very fast. From one generation to another one will be enough to progress. But we had the intelligence to adapt and make tools and kill an animal when we're cold and you know what I mean? A most animals don't have the intelligence to do that. Think, oh, hey, let me slaughter this animal and put a skin on because <laughs> no. I'm freezing to death. No, right. they just crawl into a hole and hibernate for yes. six months. Yeah, but remember one thing. <laughs> uh -huh. At the time that we're talking about we were still animals. Right. So True. we didn't have we didn't have that situation that you're describing right now. Okay. That that situation is the what we call the cultural heredity. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your genes don't accommodate to that, you die. You're gone. <laughs> but with the intellectual one, you learn how to manipulate nature. And that is the beauty of the human race. We are learning to manipulate mother nature. No animal can do that. We are the first species that probably have the opportunity for, to last forever mm -hmm. because we learn what we need to change the environment. For example, today we are developing that knowledge very, very, very fast to television, to education, to literature, to radio. So the expansion of the of the heredity that is a cultural heredity is very fast and can change the human from one generation to the other one. Correct. Look, for example, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Well, artificial intelligence is, is something that is totally new. The computers mm -hmm. are going to start to learn to talk to you, and then suddenly they are going to guide you in the things that you need. Mm -hmm. Isn't that dangerous, though, because who's programming the computer? <laughs> well, the problem is this. Initially, is going to be a, prog a program by somebody who is going to program the computer. Mm -hmm. But look, the artificial intelligence is now moving to emotional artificial intelligence. We never thought we master the relationship between humans and machines. We always said we have the control of the emotion. Mm -hmm. So your machine mm -mm. Had never will have that opportunity. So it's like real life Terminator and just well, hoping that they don't start out outsmarting us humans. But the problem is this. 
to our demise. The artificial intelligence, the emotional artificial intelligence mm. in 2025 is going to be a market of more than $175 billion a year. And what is happening is you have a computer mm -hmm. who is accumulating throughout the whole world emotions. So when you laugh, they record the laughing. Mm -hmm. When you cry, they record the crying. When you are angry, they record the anger. When you're happy, they record the happiness. Okay. When you slap the, the table, you, the immediately is an emotion. So they start to learn through millions of people mm -hmm. emotion. This. And there's the end to the human race. No, it's not. It's not. It's going to no? be communication. It's going to be an education. Imagine and the once force. again, now you apply the two different mm -hmm. inheritances. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The biological inheritance mm -hmm. is not going to be so important because now the the intellectual inheritance mm -hmm. will be part of that group. Okay. So so you would need to you would need to create humans that they are better prepared. Okay. I think we're going to end that the human brain is being used only one ten of the human brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have certain types of things in our brain that we we don't even understand yet, mm. all right? Or we don't know how powerful it can be. Mm. What is going to happen is when we are going to have the challenge and the explore these things. We're pretty good at self-destruction too, though, Doc. Let me just <laughs> <laughs> note that. Not learning. Yeah, but, but Let me that, just point that, that out. But that, that situation is a political situation, okay? okay. And you can eliminate certain amount but you know what? It's going to be, there are still billions of people. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Scary thought. <laughs> you always will be better than the computer. The computer will be faster. But your brain has the capacity to be a lot more used for it. It sounds like we need to start taking more thoughtful approach to shaping our future traits, or we may be doing ourselves some serious disservices. Well, that wraps it up. Check us out next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Newsmax. And if you've not caught a previous episode, search American Medicine Today on YouTube. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at the number below. You can tweet at Dr. Benati using hashtag American Medicine Today or hashtag AMT. We would like to hear from you.